here from 1970s, a little time capsule from MGA. Once again, a Mitsubishi group, kind of like that radio I did recently. Nice case. It does have a strap for it, but the strap is hugely ungainly and swings around, so I've taken it off. But it does have attachment points for it. Uh, marked Japan there, as you might expect from Mitsubishi. It opens from either side. You can open it here, plus you can open it here and take the entire top off. That's convenient to get inside. And here's our contents. We have a nice tape recorder. Compact cassette. Old style compact cassette. Of course, take a more look at that. And we have our power adapter and sort of some accessories here. And our microphone. And our operating instructions. We'll take a look at these too. Here's our AC adapter. Outputs 6 volts DC at 300 milliamps. Tip negative. Once again, Japan. We'll be using that. It runs a little on batteries, but it's more dependable on the uh, AC power. We have a spare battery compartment for four double A's and an earphone. We have our telephone patch cord, if you want to record off the telephone, MGA. And we have our MGA dynamic microphone which uh, had the cord wrapped around it and has totally dissolved into the plastic in places but it still works so we'll take a look at that too opening up the microphone that's all there is not a lot And then we have our instructions. We'll take a look at these. I guess looking at the instructions first, they're interesting. I'm dating this 1970 because, although there's no dates on it anywhere, it says Mitsubishi was founded 100 years ago. And they were founded in 1870. So that would make this 1970. And the overall physical appearance and controls is certainly 1970-ish. And here on the inside of the back panel shows all the various Mitsubishi uh, companies and products they make. I like all those little uh, drawings of the little people there. And inside we have all of our instructions. Something was cut out on the back, but I don't know what. Maybe a price, I'm not sure. Please take a moment to locate and identify all the MGA TC20 controls. Pretty common stuff. TC20 accessories, everything's included for all of your business, school, or pleasure needs. They date their instructions A, B, C, and D. There's A. Um, mine has two battery compartments. One is supposed to be for rechargeables and one for regulars. But both of mine have that extra little um, hole up there and neither one of them look like that. So apparently I have for just regular double A's. There's your power adapter. Our earphone cord, our 
our, our telephone cord, I mean, our earphone. And this originally, I guess, came with a cassette tape, which this unit here does not have. I'd be surprised if it had it. I would have liked to have had it, though. So there's A, B, how to become an MGA cassette tape player recorder expert. Please read these instructions. When you've located all accessories, proceed to 1. How to power it and things. Operate your recorder on batteries or current. How to play back pre-recorded voice or music tapes. various ways to control the functions, how to record from live sources with your aux in, how to fix your cassette tape, don't erase, how to, uh, make sure you don't over record on your cassette tapes. How to record from the phone, all of the normal things you would expect in this. Common sense care for your TC20. Take good care of your heads. recording and the playback head and finally D fast service checkoff guide see if you can fix it first before you take it to the servicer for correction a little matrix of what might be wrong and what you might be able to do to fix it before calling for service Okay, well, mine does not fast forward. It does not reverse. It plays at about twice the speed it should. And I can't figure out how to get it out of the, how to get the whole chassis out. Um, I can certainly get it open after some trouble, but we'll take a look at that when we go through the pre-maintenance I did. Well, it just doesn't work good. It plays a little. but at about twice the speed it should, as you can tell. And I wanted to get in and fix it, but the screw over here is giving me grief. I've broken two drill bits so far trying to drill it out. So I bought a heavier duty screw removal kit and I'm gonna try it. Maybe I can get in here and fix that speed. And it also doesn't do fast forward or reverse so it's got lots of problems maybe I can fix it probably I can't okay well that drilled it right out very easily this is a much better kit than I had this is a work EG and that was a size 9 it ended up doing a, a size 10 was too small in case you're interested in needing what seems to be a good drill kit so maybe now I can get in here and see what's going on with this beast. Well, without a tape in it, I can actually get it to fast forward, at least the motor sounds, and reverse. But with a tape in it, it won't do anything. And I have not been able to figure out how to get this circuit board out to get to the belts, which are obviously on the other side. One screw here doesn't do anything at all. Under the speaker, there really isn't much of interest. The Mitsubishi MGA, as you would expect. I 
might be dead in the water on this. And I'll keep at it. Well, I guess we'll see if it can record anything. I've plugged that old nasty microphone in. Oh, the take-up spool is not spinning. That's not good. All right. We're testing the recording of the little MGA tape recorder. It plays back way too fast. Let's see how it records and plays back on the same unit. I'll, I'll rewind it on a different unit and then put it in here and see what we got. All right, I re rewound it there on the little sears I keep on the workbench here. We're testing the recording of the little MGA tape recorder. It plays back way too fast. Let's see how it records and plays back on the same unit. I'll, I'll rewind it on a different unit. Okay, well, you know, it didn't quite sound 100% awful as the normal playback of a cassette does. I guess if you play something back you've recorded on the unit, it sounds a little better. Good to know. But I won't be using this. This is just for historical interest. That's an old 1970 MGA unit. Alright, taking a little physical tour of it. We have our cassette up, marked C up. And here's inside. You can see the uh, record and erase heads there. Hey, it's running on batteries. It doesn't do that very often. I usually use the charger. But something kicks in every once in a while and it runs on batteries. Oops, that stopped it. So it's positional. MGA. There's some uh, designation there. TC20. This is the Lincolnwood, Illinois. Rechargeable battery, 6 volt DC, power consumption, 0.9 watts. Mitsubishi Electric Corporation, Japan. Down here we have our spot for our earphone and our power adapter. And in the back we have our batteries. As you've already seen, sometimes these batteries work, sometimes they do not. I've cleaned the contacts, but to no avail. So I'm probably going to use it for dependability on AC power today. Now it's a little loose. Oh, by the way, I found out when you want to get into this, you have to unscrew that red record press button to get the back off. Um, it's a little loose because... When I wanted to get into it originally, this screw was frozen and I had to drill it out. And I actually wasted two drill bits before I bought a better drill out kit. Here's our controls, integrated circuit. Certainly dates it around 1970. Our volume, all the way up. See the white line, we're all the way down. Our push to play control. Reverse, fast forward, those don't work. Um, remote, microphone with remote, that does work. And an aux in jack, which actually amazingly enough works. But the recording output of all this is terrible. It's about twice as fast as it should be. And plus it just sounds bad, besides being twice as fast. 
I've cleaned the heads and done what I can, but that's not much. When I'm doing stuff here today, I'm going to have a little helper unit to rewind the uh, cassettes during things so that we can uh, hear them. Okay, I've plugged the AC power in so you can hear how it sounds. I thought we'd play just a little bit of my Walker's tape. Way too fast, don't you think? You can hear a motor for the rewind and fast forward, but obviously the belts are no good. So, you've got problems with audio. Now that's recorded on a different recorder. What does it sound like if it's recorded on this? Let's try that. All right, let's try a little voice recording first. Turn the uh, remote on, don't I? All right, testing the voice recording on the MGA TC20, I believe it is, to compare the speed playback of a tape recorded on the unit with a tape that was recorded on a normal, well-functioning unit. We'll see how this sounds. All right, I'm going to use our little assistant cassette recorder here to rewind that. And then we'll play that back here and uh, see what it sounds like. If it sounds any better. Well, it certainly sounded better, um, still bad, but better. Let's try the aux in jack and see what something sounds like recorded from that onto the unit. See if it sounds any better than that original pre-recorded walking tape unit. All right, we'll maybe get something off the MP3 player. That should be enough. All right, we did our little system rewinder there. Um, what did we get from the MP3 player to this? That sounds horrific, doesn't it? Let's stop that. Okay, so it just uh, sounds bad either way. Well, that's been a little time capsule from 1970 and Mitsubishi. I wish it worked better. I wish I could fix it, but I still like having it as an example of the time. I'm over 50 years old. Um, I could expect more, I guess, but I do like having it in my collection. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Bye.